of the Facebook family updates from the F8 developer conference that you need to know about. Guys, Kim here from Your Social Voice. Now, if this is your first time watching, welcome. Make sure that you subscribe so that you find out all these things before anyone else because most people aren't going to tell you these insights. So if you don't know what the F8 developer conference is, what it is is an event every single year where all of the developers that use the Facebook platform, all of the Facebook family tools, so I'm talking WhatsApp, Audience Network, Oculus, Instagram, Facebook, Messenger, everything that Facebook touches and owns, they come together and they announce all of the new features, all of the new announcements, everything that's happening across all the platforms there. Right, and it happens every year between April and May. And now, a lot of people, if you're seeing them posting about it now, it's probably because they didn't know about it, they're watching my video first and then they're coming to you and telling you what's happened. Now, one of the big ones that I really wanna talk about today and share with you um, is gonna be Messenger, but I'll come back to that at the end. So what I'm gonna tell you about is something cool. So for all you single people out there, Facebook dating is coming. Right, so Facebook is actually bringing out its own dating profile that you'll be able to opt into and you'll be able to match up with other people. So it uses all of that data that us as advertisers, as business owners utilize, the locations, the age, the likes, the dislikes, you know, the type of food that we like, and they're bringing people together in a dating, so goodbye Tinder, right? Bringing people together to allow you to match with people in your area, allow you to match with people when you're traveling, um, if you're out there and being single and having fun. Now they've got a little secret bonus as well, right? It's called Secret Crush. So what happens is if you've got your friend list and you can go and you're like, oh yeah, I've got this person. Oh, they're a little bit cute. I met them one time and I had them on Facebook. I'll put them down as my secret crush. They won't know that happened, right? It's completely separate and secret for you. However, if they've also said that you're a secret crush as well, they will match you together and then you can go away and you can have a conversation about it. So they're adding all these little tools in there to make Facebook more fun, but also the emphasis is gonna be that you need to, right? That you need to be on Facebook for everything. And that's really what they're focusing on. And that parlays into the next part, and if you wanna think about one of the big components that Facebook is pushing is Facebook groups. So um, if you haven't seen already, you would have seen uh, last week, depending on when you're watching this video, right? They've actually updated the Facebook app. They've updated what it looks like. It's cleaner, it's clearer, it's very white and crisp, but there's, gonna, there's a big emphasis, a big emphasis coming out on Facebook groups because they want people to build communities. The way that they're likening it, the way that they're thinking of it is, this is, if you imagine back in the olden days, your town square. So the Facebook platform as itself, the news feed, if you will, is your town square where people come together. There's groups, there's buying and selling, buy and sell groups, there's trading. There's all these different things happening in this one core key area, which is the Facebook news feed, right? Which is your town square. And as everyone comes together, as everyone is, uh, is creating in these areas, they want people to create more groups. They want people to be able to interact together. They want people to be connecting with each other because powerful connections is really what Facebook is all about. Being able to create those relationships and bring people together is their core key focus. So groups is gonna be a big emphasis. So if you're a group manager, if you own a group, if you run a group, Note that this is going to be a heavy, heavy push for Facebook in the months to come. You'll see that they've already started to, relate, uh, to release moderators, uh, mentors, admins of groups to really try and get, and obviously pages running, uh, being able to own groups as well, to really build that community atmosphere because you start to see within groups um, them being the main components of the newsfeed, them taking over the newsfeed and really having a lot of groups and then segmenting out the information for uh, your, your interactions in there because they want people to use their news, uh, sorry, not their news feeds, their stories as they're really the, the storytelling place, as you can tell. That's where you're posting about what's happening in your day because it's more private. It's more of that one-to-one. -one. It's more of your living room, if you will, where you're sitting in there and you've got those interactions. So Facebook stories, Instagram stories, they're really wanting you to utilize that to tell what's happening in your world rather than the news feed now, which they're pushing more towards groups. Which, I mean, don't get me wrong, you'll still be able to post in the news feed. Ads will still be shown there, but they're really heavily emphasizing that. Now, on Instagram, again, they really, really, really want to focus on that storytelling ability in there. They've done that really well and they use stories across Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, which is hugely, hugely important and works really well. 
And that's where you want, they want you to spend more time. That's where they want you to have more interactions. Now, on Instagram, they're having a huge focus on the anti-bullying movement. So Facebook is one, um, and I say Facebook as a whole, but obviously Instagram, they really are anti-bullying. They're looking at getting uh, anti-discrimination, any like hate crimes and things like that that are being broadcast on Facebook. They're getting their AI and their AR better to be able to pick these things up and remove them straight away. But on, on Instagram, they really want to push um, the heavy uh, anti-bullying movement and that's really what they want to focus on. Secondary to that, they're actually going to be testing, and for all you influencers out there, don't cry, all right, they're going to be testing taking away the likes on posts. So not showing likes, right? Because really, they like apart from the post owner, so no one else would be able to see that your, your video, your photo got 10,000 likes, 20,000 likes. They are going to test, and it's not going to be there forever, but they've already rolled out tests in America of hiding that. Because really, who cares? Right? It should be about the content, it should be about the people, it should be about the interactions. So that is something for influencers and for brands to start thinking about, which means that you just gotta get better content. Because no longer can the shot of you in a bikini with 100,000 likes on it really be giving you anything apart from that you've got a shot in a bikini. Right? Which is what it's all about, what's what Instagram was intended to be. But they are, for any collaborators and for influencers, they're highly emphasizing the shop on um, Instagram. So you can actually shop on Instagram, and some of you might go, Kim, I've already been able to shop on Instagram in a whole new way. So if you imagine that I'm sitting here and I'm wearing a Rode microphone right now, right? I'm recording some cool content for you guys. I can tag Rode in this if they have it, if they have it on their online store that's connected through Instagram. You guys click on this lapel, you click on the microphone, up pops this, Rode microphone, $199, whatever it might be. Click order, and in two steps, you can make payment from within Instagram. You select PayPal, or you select your card details, and you enter it straight away, bang, done. So at a drop of a hat, you can buy, you can go from seeing something in your favorite influencers or your favorite collaborators' um, videos or content that they put out, and you can buy it straight away, right? So it's really, really powerful. How are they using that payment processing section? Well, it is being spoken that um, that Facebook has got an Operation Libra, uh, a little bit undercover, which is actually a cryptocurrency, which they're gonna be using. So that's a whole other rabbit hole that we don't really wanna go down too much. Uh, people like it and hate it, but they're actually utilizing that to make instantaneous payments so that the payment providers are getting their uh, payments straight away and everyone wins. So really they want the creators and the collaborators and influencers to actually be able to track more effectively what happens. Because at the moment people are throwing money out there to influencers and creators and who knows if you get an actual result versus this is like great, someone clicked on Kim's microphone and they purchased, happy days. So it's really, really big and important to know that these things are coming and changing and how that's gonna affect your business, how you collaborate with other people, how you actually make it all work, which is really, really interesting. Now, another platform that they're pushing heavily payments and shopping on is WhatsApp. So in WhatsApp, you're gonna have more options now as a business. So you've got normal WhatsApp, but you also have a business WhatsApp as well. You do need separate phone numbers to make that work. But if you have a business WhatsApp, you can list your collections, you can actually list on there different products and services that you sell, again, for people to be able to purchase and buy. So WhatsApp for business is one that they're heavily pushing people towards now, that they really want you to start to explore and extrapolate because as a messaging functionality, sorry guys, I'm spitting all over you, I'm so excited, right? As a messaging functionality, they really want you to enjoy that, to collaborate, to message businesses, and it's heavily encrypted. Obviously, Facebook is, uh, hasn't been in the past one to be known for privacy and encryption, but now they are really, really focusing on that privacy aspect, that encryption aspect, so that you can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a business, and you can actually use that to go forward, right? You can use that to have a conversation, to make payment inside of WhatsApp, which they're actually doing at the moment across um, a range of countries, India being a big one that they're actually testing this at the moment, over a million users making and taking payments on WhatsApp. So it's pretty epic, right guys, I think. So if you think it's epic, throw me a comment down in the comment box below, give me a, this is epic, because I think this is huge. So if you have a business that's doing anything like sub a thousand dollars, you've got products, I just think that this is gonna be amazing and a game changer in the next couple of years. Is it gonna be straight away? Probably not, it takes a little while for adoption to happen, it's only being tested in India at the moment, but when that comes through, it's gonna be absolutely huge for your business. Now, let's look at on the other side of that, right, on the flip side of the coin on messaging, Messenger. 
So they've just rolled out, um, they're really focusing on Lightspeed, which is making Facebook Messenger the fastest messaging app that there is. So they've tested obviously against WhatsApp, against the traditional messenger amongst many different messenger platforms. Obviously they will never name the other ones, but they're looking to make messenger the absolute most effective and fastest methodology for you to be able to communicate with other people, which is great. So if any of you have been watching my videos, and you know, Kim's always talked about bots, they've talked about any of these different things, right, that I've been talking about inside of Messenger, it's hugely important for you to focus on Messenger now. But there's a pro and a con with that. So one of the pros is that obviously with Messenger bots and the automation and the sequences and being able to give people information, it's ridiculously valuable. However, they are changing it again to a pay to play model. So if you want to send a broadcast, same as you would with an email service provider, you're going to have to fork up the dollars and pay for it. So they really want people to use it, but they also want to make sure that people don't abuse it. So if you've got a messenger bot and you've sent out broadcasts and you've sent out hundreds of thousands of them and you've been really getting people's attention, that's gonna change and it's gonna be similar to sending SMS. So it might be $50 for a thousand messages or something like that, but it is gonna be pay to play, which you know all it means is that the people that are abusing it, people that are, I will say, like the, the laggards or the crap people on the platform really for layman's terms, they're not gonna be able to use it as well because they're not gonna to wanna to pay for it, right? So that means that we as professional marketers, we as professional business people are gonna be able to best leverage that. So I think that's hugely powerful and it's a huge opportunity for you and your business to focus on Messenger, to really hone in and dive in deep to it, right? And lastly, it's a little bit out there, but Oculus Rift being AR and virtual reality, like they're really heavily emphasizing that. They're heavily pushing people towards playing with that. They own Oculus, obviously. So um, they've just released their new two versions of Oculus, which you can get under 500 US. Uh, you can pick up a headset for those, which look really cool. Um, to be honest, at the moment, that is still a Wild West, a cowboy, a, uh, a crazy space. So I can't comment too much on that. Apart from the augmented reality side, using things like Spark AR, that is really powerful at the moment where you can see if you imagine walking into a shop looking at a pair of sunglasses pulling out your app holding out the sunglasses then flipping the camera around looking at yourself and you've got those sunglasses on so if you have physical products if you're in e-commerce if you're selling anything like that i would highly recommend focusing on ar looking into that augmented reality and spark ar is a really good one to have a look at and understand now, I hope that that's giving you some insights. This is just a drop in the ocean. They've had their, their key keynotes went for over uh, three hours altogether, uh, which were ridiculously long. Uh, and then there was more, uh, uh, more talks, more presentations, more developer insights that came out from all of that. That's just the highlights from the keynotes. But guys, I hope that you enjoyed that and you can see some of the new things that are coming out and start to think about that for your business. Think about how it applies to you and how you can use that to leverage and build your business in 2019 and be Beyond. Now, if you've liked it, please give me a thumbs up so I know that you liked it. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. I don't mind. Just tell me what you thought about it. And like I said, leave me a comment and make sure you subscribe so that you get these notifications that you are ahead of the curve before anyone else. Until next time, I'm Kim Barrett. You have been awesome. Adios.